Hey, Andrew, how's it going? Good, how are you doing? Good, thanks. So uh, can you just walk us through, man, your decision to, to come to FSU, to commit to FSU, and you guys what the recruiting process was like for you when you entered the portal? Yeah, uh, when I first entered the portal, I want to say within the next the first couple of, couple of hours, I want to say uh, FSU, uh, Coach Dugan, and Coach Novell uh, gave me a call. Um, for me, it was just, it was, it was crazy just because a, a school like Florida State had interest in me. Um, and I was very excited to um, not only um, stay in the stay in the uh, Power Five conference, but also uh, come back to the state of Florida. All right, next will be Ira Shofel from Warchant. Hey Andrew, um, what's it feel like to actually be here? I know you visited a few times, sure. but to actually be here and wearing Florida State colors and, and and being able to meet with the coaches and being officially a part of the program. Yeah, it feels really good. I just um like me and you uh, spoke on the phone before. Um, I, I, I was I, I was up here a couple of times. So, but this time it feels a lot different because I feel like I'm here for good now. Um, so I'm very excited. I got a chance to meet with all the coaches, all the staff, and all that stuff, and everybody been welcoming me with um, open arms. So that's, that's all I can ask for. Uh, being a new guy, um, they're making the transition very smooth, and I'm just excited to get to work. Next will be Chris Mee from Old Two Four Seven. Hey, Andrew, what about this offense was appealing to you when you were in the process of finding your next home? What stood out to you about it? Uh, well, for me, um, coming out of Juco, I was a big Coach um, Novell fan. What he was doing at Memphis, uh, that was a school that I really wanted to get recruited by. Um, though that didn't happen, I always kept my eye out on what Coach Novell was doing um, over there at Memphis because uh, he was a very highly uh, highly touted uh, offensive coordinator. Um, so for me, it was just um, having the abilities to go out there and make plays one-on-one um, and beat one-on-one -on -one matchups. I feel like that, um, that's my game. So um, Coach Novell always says it's, it's a playmaker offense, and I feel like I'm a playmaker. So I'm excited to get to work. That could be Matt Marshall from the Orlando Central. Yeah, Andrew, what, what did you know about Florida State and, and what stood out about its maybe its history and its about its football program that maybe appealed to you to come there and play football? Yeah, well, I feel like if, if you watch college football and you don't know about Florida State and the history, I feel like, uh, you must be, you must live underneath the rock. Um, even though I grew up a Miami fan, I, I, I understood what the history of Florida State is, and I understand the type of players um, that, that came through here. Um, during the offseason, I was working out with Dalvin Cook and um, Bobo Wilson. They, they they told me every single day um, what they expect um, um, out of Florida State. So I just hope I can live up to what they did and and and, and start to climb with these guys. Next will be Antoine Staley from Tallahassee Democrat. Yeah, Andrew, just talk about what do you bring to this offense uh, uh, that's dynamic and maybe unique uh, that they might know they're not seeing. Um, I feel like I'm a playmaker. Um, I feel like if you go back and watch my film from 2019 and also um, some plays I did in 2020, you can see that. Um, and I feel like the whole entire Big 12 knows and the guys who played against um, me at Kansas. So now I just feel like I'm ready to show the ACC and the rest of the world um, my abilities. So I feel like um, things that separate me is my speed. Um, and, and being able to to, uh, to to go deep on the defense. We'll go back to Brennan Sonoma. Can you kind of walk us through the last few months, Andrew, I guess things that you were doing to kind of stay prepared and ready for, for eventually getting to Florida State and getting back in the swing of things for football? Yes, sir. Uh, well, for me, it was just, um, just continue to, st um, to work out every single day, continue to um, – just to, just to get better every single year. I feel like you need to get better and there's always something you can get better at. So for me, um, my mindset was going into this, this off season as if it was, I was going into my, my, uh, my rookie mini camp. Uh, so for me, I was working out uh, five times a week with my trainer down in South Florida, uh, Nick Hicks at Perform, and also I'm uh, running routes with, with my, uh, with my trainer, uh, Tevin Allen with Gold Feet. So I've been working out every single day as if I was always coming into the Jacksonville Jaguars organization. So I feel like I'm ready to go. We'll go back to Irish or something. Man, um, you know, coming out of high school and, and signing with a school like Northern Illinois and now being introduced to Florida State, does it feel like you've arrived or do you feel like that's just more motivation to, to prove you belong at a school like this? Oh, no, I don't feel like I've arrived at all because um, I'm still in college. You know what I mean? This is my sixth year. Um, I, mo most of the guys that I grew up playing with and stuff like that, they're in the NFL right now. So I don't feel like I arrived at all. I feel like I still got ways to go when I'm excited for the work. We're back to Chris Mee. Did Mackenzie Milton's decision influence you at all in the sense of knowing you would have a quarterback that you were coming in with, as well as Jordan Travis being here, knowing that position would be taken care of in the sense of being a receiver? Like that was my biggest um, draw, um, knockoff from 2019 to 2020 was a quarterback. And also a receiver is such a dependent um, position. 
you can be right up, you can run it wide open all day. It doesn't matter unless the quarterback finds you. So for me, uh, that relationship I had with McKenzie um, before, uh, previous before this, um, played a huge impact as well, as well with uh, Jordan Travis. I got a couple friends that know him as well. Um, so I'm just excited to get to work with the quarterbacks. And I, I know that um, the quarterbacks are going to put me and also the rest of the offense in the right position to be successful. This will be Azon Hazardandy from Board Camp. Hey, Andrew, you know, you've been to, I don't know, this is your fourth different program, and, but you've been in Illinois, you've been in Iowa, you've been in Kansas, you're a Florida guy. Was there a time in the last four or five years where you kind of looked in the mirror and you're like, man, why am I here? What am I doing here? And, and how did you use that kind of moment to, to be where you're at now? And how's that made you maybe a, a better person and a better player, the journey that you've had? Yeah, most definitely. My, my journey has not been easy as, at all. I've been a roller coaster of emotions. Some days I felt like I wasn't good enough. Some days I felt like where, where, where I, I wasn't being respected enough, you know what I mean? So um, for me, it just just got to keep going, keep pushing. Um, just blessed and fortunate to have an extra extra senior year. Uh, most guys don't get that opportunity. So I'm going to use this to my, my best ability, um, try to win as much games as, as we can, and also um, try to put myself in the best position to get to the next level. We'll go back to Brennan Sinelli. You got a chance to to come up here to Tallahassee, I guess, early this offseason and throw around with Mackenzie Milton, some of the other players as well. I guess, what was that experience like for you? I guess, general takeaways from from working out with Mackenzie and, and other future teammates as well. Yeah, um, my biggest thing was I didn't want, since, since I was going to miss out on the spring, I didn't want me, uh, when I came on Monday for, for my first time to meet, um, for my first time that meeting the guys. So for me, I wanted to uh, take it in my control and come up here and uh, meet with some of the, uh, the receivers and uh, Mackenzie as well. Uh, talk with them one-on-one -on -one and just see see how they operate and stuff like that. So it won't be my first time catching the ball from McKenzie. Uh, so I feel like that that's, that's going to put me at an advantage. I've been talking to him pretty much the whole entire spring. So I'm very excited to get to work with him every single day now. All right, we'll go back to Aslan Hazardandi. Andrew, you know, some people that are, you know, a fan of the traditional way that things used to be in terms of college football might have different feelings about the transfer ball than you or I have. But for you to have the ability uh, to come one last time and be able to have the, the free movement to, to pick a new school and, and find a, a new landing ground, just what does it mean to, to have that freedom now as, as a football player, as, as a young man? Because for so many people, like when you made that decision, you had to stick through everything. And, uh, you know, sometimes there's certain circumstance that you should be able to kind of probably get away from. I mean, how does it feel to be able to have that sort of power now as a player? I feel like that's, uh, that's very big, especially too with the rule that NCAA passed for underclassmen as well, the one-time transfer rule. I feel like that's, I feel like it's going to um, put a lot of kids at, um, 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 at, a, um, at an advantage because um, as soon as a kid can, uh, can sign uh, next week, your, your whole entire coaching staff can be gone. Um, so I feel like that, that's going to help a lot of kids out um, just to make sure that um, that they find the right space, um, right spot for them, because you are making a life changing decision. You are going to be there for the next four to five years. So you got to make sure you make the right decision. When you uh, uh, whenever it was, you found out that Florida State was going to open up with Notre Dame. Um, what did what did that do for you? Just knowing because, you, you know, you talked before about wanting to show people besides the Big 12 what you could do. Uh, how exciting is that to open up with such an opponent like Notre Dame? That's another thing that really made me choose Florida State as well, just the level of competition I'll be going against, playing against Clemson, Notre Dame, Miami, Florida. You know, those guys going to have first-round um, defensive backs on, on their team, first-round defensive talent on their team. So, for me, I feel like <clears throat> that, that's going to be a time for me to, to showcase um, not only what I can do, but also showcase what this team um, is building towards and, 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 and what, what we're trying to accomplish here. All right, we'll go back to Avon. Andrew, you mentioned the, the relationship or knowing McKenzie before you got to Florida State. How did you know McKenzie? What, what, did, what was kind of the genesis of you two knowing each other and getting to? Uh, you know. I was sent you. Um, I had a, um, a roommate, a um, friend of mine uh, named Emmanuel Green, who was uh, with McKenzie uh, the year that they won uh, the national championship in 2017. Uh, so for him, he was always bragging about that. I was talking about his ring and stuff like that. So I talked to McKenzie a couple of times on FaceTime beforehand. So it was just crazy just um, coming over now and just seeing that. That, that now he's he's my teammate and, and now I'm here at Florida State. We'll go back to Avon. Andrew, when you guys start getting into these player run practices, for you is it is it going to be a wait and see kind of thing to to take a leadership role, or do you want to come out there day one when it's player run stuff and and try to kind of set the tempo for what this team needs to be this season? Uh, for me, I'm not trying to step on nobody's toes. Um, at the end of the day, like these guys have been putting in their work since the spring. 
Um, but at the same exact time, um, I, don't, I don't feel like I'm here for no reason. You know what I mean? So I feel like um, it's like everything's going to happen organically. Um, I know there's, there's some younger guys that have a lot of talent on this team as well that, that we're going to need to, um, to help us as well. Um, so I'm just excited just to put my hand in the pile and just get, get to work. Uh, we'll go back to Ira. Man, I was just, uh, and I know you've been here a couple of times, but but probably not as much as you have now in terms of seeing everything. Yes, What's been your impression of the facilities and um, just the amenities for for an athlete at Florida State? Uh, everything is beautiful. I feel like everything is top notch. Um, every, every single time I turn a corner, I feel like I'm smiling. Just can't believe that I'm here at Florida State. Just I just can't wait to put the uh, the seminal um, on, on my um, on my head with the helmet and stuff like that. So I'm just very excited just to just to get to work. And um, every day it's just like I'm living the dream. So, all right, all right. so thanks, AP. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Thank you all for joining us. And uh, 